It occurs to me that we in Mississippi have a lot of pride, so we'd like to show off a little bit. And we've discovered there's no better way to show off our pastimes or our history or our collections than to put them in museums. We've got a lot of small museums in the state, and that's what we're concentrating on this week. Matter of fact, we're in one right now, the Macomb Railroad Museum. And I'll tell you more about this one as we go. But our first stop is in Meridian at the Mississippi Industrial Heritage Museum. This was the last commercial steam engine factory in America. Uh, they actually stayed in business longer than any other steam engine manufacturer. And there were hundreds of them at one time in, in the United States. Well, Meridian was a, uh, the industrial center of the state and of the region. Uh, Birmingham only was an area that had more than Meridian in industry-wise in the early uh, 20th century. And so, Sule was an integral part of that industrial development. Mr. Sule, who founded the company, was a very a big industrialist and inventor. And uh, during his lifetime, he did 40 patents, but he did something that most people in those days didn't do. Is he not only patented something, he manufactured it. And so that really made a big difference in the family owning Sule for 110 years. The family owned it from 1892 until 2002. And at that point, you know, Bob was ready to retire. Bob Sule and I used to eat lunch together at Weidman's. It had a long counter, and you sit by a different person most every day. And one day I was next to Bob, and Bob told me that he couldn't go any further with the Sule works, steamworks, because they weren't making any sales, and the bank was about to take them over and they were going to have to close it and have an auction. And I said, Bob, you just can't do that. That place is like a museum. It's a step back in time, and it shows our history here in Meridian. We just don't need to lose that. And he said, well, it's up to you then. <laughs> and uh, so I bit off a little bit more than I wanted to chew at that, that dinner by that day. In 2003, we had cleaned up the site enough that we thought, hey, this would be really neat to invite the public, especially the local public, uh, to come in and see what we were doing down here. And so we said, okay, we're gonna set up this date, we're gonna have a little steam event. And so, word of mouth, no advertising, we had 400 people come to visit us that day. And we said, wow, this is very, very popular. And people kept saying, you're gonna do it again next year, we hope, and we said, Sure, why not? And so then the very next year, we had the Sule Live Steam Festival uh, as, uh, in, name, in name and activity. And so we were really excited. It's continued to grow. We've had as many as uh, 6,000 people come. Industrial museums are quite popular over in Europe. And lots of people have come from England in Western Europe, uh, we have visitors from um, all over the United States uh, that have come at one time or the other. Uh, on Festival Day, we have a draw of three or four states away as usual, but occasionally there'll be someone who's come down from the New England states, or maybe from North or South Dakota. An industrial museum is different from what we think of as a museum today, like an art museum or arts and entertainment museum, something that you feel like you can go through and see an hour or two hours time. Here at Sule, it takes at least a day to go through and see everything in operation and see how it works. Well, a steam engine has a lot of personality when it's operating under live steam. It's got a heat, thing that you feel, it's a motion that you see, 
and it's a sound that you hear. During the STEAM Festival, we have demonstrators that come in from all over the southeastern United States, and they demonstrate different things. Uh, we have people that demonstrate with uh, cast aluminum, cast iron. They do some casting here during the day, both Friday and Saturday. And then we have uh, people that do uh, blacksmithing, which is a very popular event here. Uh, you can see how hard a blacksmith actually works uh, to uh, turn a piece of iron into a useful object. We have a broom making shop. We have someone who does spinning and weaving. We have even some of the very earliest type of industry that was in our area that the Native Americans did, and that was flint napping. On the you know big picture, you need to know your history to know how civilization got where it is today because we don't want to lose the level of civilization that we have, the iPhones and the air conditioning and all the good things that we have. But those things just weren't around. They had to be built up. And places like this is what actually worked civilization or our lifestyle up to what it is now. Uh, and it was a lot of hard work. So we feel like it's up to us to tell that story here in Meridian. And hopefully that story can be heard all over Mississippi and, and the United States and Europe. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. <laughs>